The United Nations has dialed up the hysteria with the release of its latest climate change report. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change inspired many doom and gloom headlines with their report, including this from The Guardian. It says the IPCC report makes it clear no new fossil fuel projects can be opened. That includes us, Australia. While The Washington Post wrote, our children will never experience a childhood as cool as ours and our childhood wasn't that cool. While nine went with world on thin ice as UN climate report gives stark warning. UN Secretary General said that humanity itself is on thin ice and that ice is melting fast, poetic. And he also urged countries to bring forward their net zero targets to stop, and I quote, <laughs> the climate time bomb. Let's see if it scared my next guest, one of our country's top geoscientists, Ian Plymer. Ian, thank you for joining me. Are you shaking and crying over these doomsday announcements? Well, what I'm scared of is the mainstream media uncritically accepting this codswallop. <laughs> what I'm scared of is these people get given a microphone and talk about total lies. Hurricanes are not increasing. We have data. Sea level is not increasing. It's some places it's decreasing, other places it's increasing. We're not having an increase in bushfires. We're not having an increase in climate deaths. We have a very large data bank showing us the exact opposite. So what these people are doing is sprouting exactly the opposite to what the data tells us. They're doing it with much more noise. They're getting the very friendly media, like The Guardian, like the mainstream media, saying, oh, we're all doomed. But every single prediction they've ever made has been wrong. Now, they've been doing this for 30 years. Mm. This latest missive was just over 30 pages long. All the science comes much later, so they give us all the scary stuff, but they don't give us their data. Mm. And they still haven't, after 30 years, they still haven't shown us that human emissions drive global warming. See, I don't understand is if their predictions aren't accurate or if they're wildly inaccurate, why that doesn't dent their credibility? Why the, um, you would hope at times would be sceptical media say, well, five years ago you said this and this and none of that happened and you said this and this and actually the opposite happened. Why do we have this situation where it's the boy who cried wolf and every single time crying wolf works? It's a great scare story. We're all going to die. We're all doomed. And it's great for the mainstream media to frighten people. Front page on the newspaper, lead article on a television program. And people fall for the propaganda, just the same as the bulk of Russian citizens are supporters of Putin. They fall for the propaganda. Mm. So there's been a relentless campaign of propaganda for 30 years and the basics haven't been shown. If you cannot show that human emissions of carbon dioxide drive global warming, then all the arguments about coal, about gas, about hydrocarbons are not demonstrated. What, what about They're the, wrong. the moral arguments? This is something Alex Epstein talks about a lot as far as fossil fuels go. He talks about how... It will help lift people out of poverty. It will uh, uh, cheap, reliable energy is essential for a high standard of living. Whether we're talking about the Western world or we're talking about the developing world, why aren't those who are critical of of the UN making that argument in a more, I don't know, impactful manner? Because I would think that would be something that would speak to, to young people who, who do care about the downtrodden, who do care about people in developing nations. Well, morality is not a strong card in the uh, UN's uh, pack of <laughs> cards. Uh, the morality is simple. We should know from history that beasts of burden and human muscle uh, were used until we had coal, which generated steam, and we could get out of that. In our own lifetimes, we've seen that happen in China. And in my lifetime, I've seen the situation where we've had cheap, reliable electricity. Now we haven't. What's happened? We've gone renewable. And that is immoral, to have people who are struggling having to pay far, far more for their electricity bills. And I will not allow Greens or the UN to play the moral card to try to say they are morally superior. 
They kill people with their policies. And that's why my latest book was called Green Murder, because green policies promulgated by the UN kill people. And these people know that they're knowingly killing them. Well, the developing nation is one thing, but in Australia we've seen prices go up. We are told that renewables are the cheapest option available, though that hasn't necessarily been the experience. Look at your electricity bill. Well, well, it <laughs> hasn't been the experience in other parts of the world where uh, the re embrace of renewables has been uh, stronger than it has in Australia. Uh, what can we expect to see in the short to medium term as far as prices go, as far as reliability goes in this country? Well, we'll see higher prices, uh, higher inflation and more blackouts and brownouts. Uh, if you are going to get rid of cheap, reliable energy like coal and replace it by putting, ah, oh, yes, the wind's blowing, we can have uh, television on tonight. It's not just going to work. So well, but don't, um, don't forget the massive batteries in. We're putting, oh yes, we're putting oh all yes, our eggs yes, in those yes, big, we can, massive we can, batteries. We've got enough time to make a cup of coffee and that's it. That's so um, we are a very wealthy country. We've chosen by falling for this propaganda to go down the path of self-destruction. And it's only when times become economically really very difficult that we might actually reconsider and might actually look at the morality of it. We're just too wealthy at present. Well, well, that may not be the case in a few years' time. Ian Plymer, thank you so much thank for you, joining me.